For those of you who remember the early days of this channel, the name Time Tech may ring a bell, because they were actually my first promotional deal that I worked on. And you may remember a series of videos featuring their products breaking down how they perform and what overall value they can bring to your system. But it's been over a year since I've discussed their products in any sort of real capacity, and I want to go back and take a quick look at how the hardware they provided to me is holding up after nearly two years of relatively intense usage. So without any further ado, let's dive into this. Alright, so the first thing I want to say is Timetech did not approach me to make this video or pressure me into producing more content featuring their hardware. However, over the course of my relatively short relationship with them, they've provided me with 128 gigs of DDR4 clocked at various speeds and cast latencies. 64 gigs of which split into 32 gigs of 3200 MHz and 32 gigs of 2400 MHz, I use in my personal system and my render machine respectively and the rest was given away over the course of about 6 months, through various community giveaways. I'll leave links in the description to the products I'll be discussing, and I hope you stick around because I have quite a bit to say. So since they shipped their first sample to me back in August of 2018, which is the 2400 MHz kit used in my render machine, it's honestly been tortured by a prosu workload consisting of multi-hour game sessions followed by multi-hour video renders. Yeah, for any component in your system, it's going to be rough being under high constant load for hours on end, and through it all I've never once had any issues with any of the memory they've sent me. I haven't had any random blue, s blue screens or system failures commonly attributable to memory issues or errors. In fact, the memory they produce is honestly incredibly reliable, and I have to give props to the people putting this memory together because it's obvious that they know what they're doing. And if you want confirmation that I'm not just a flute case, I did a secret shopper experiment with them about 14 months ago and used the memory in a giveaway after I tested it to make sure it functioned properly. I know that's kind of a long time ago, but I actually planned this video around a year ago and just haven't gotten around to publishing my findings until now. And per my expectation, there was no issue with the 16 gig 3000 MHz kit I ordered through their website. Now, I know it's technically cheaper to buy it through Amazon, but I wanted to buy it directly from them to eliminate variables caused by having the memory switch hands before it arrives on my doorstep. Although $60 for 16 gigs of 3000 MHz DDR4 is actually right on with the general market value, with kits of similarly spec memory going for between $60 to $90. And this represents what I ultimately like about TimeTech. They offer minimalistic products that have the endurance to be used in not only desktop use cases, but also in servers. In fact, my render machine also functions as a little proxy for myself where I store all my PT related stuff. And even though it's just a Ryzen 5 1600 AF and GTX 1070 system, I found that having 32 gigs of memory really helps me out not only with render times, but also allows me to work with larger files without being bottleneck server side. In fact, this memory pairs excellently with AMD Ryzen processors, and I can assure that because I know that at TimeTech's QA department, they specifically test compatibility and stability of their modules in primarily AMD-centric builds. Obviously, they also test on Intel as well, but a vast majority of the images sourced from them on their store pages shows the DDR4 hooked up to a Ryzen system. But we've been focusing on their consumer RAM, and despite all the things I have to say about their memory, they also manufacture SSDs, based on both SATA and NVMe in capacities ranging from 256 gigs up to a terabyte. Now the drives they sampled were sent to me back in December of 2018, and I received two 480 gigabyte SATA drives with the intention of giving one of them away. And after having time to experience one of their SSDs as a boot drive, and currently just as storage, I have to say that as a boot device this drive isn't particularly optimal. When looking on their product page, it boasts 500 megabyte per second reads and 400 megabyte per second writes. In comparison to a Samsung SATA SSD, that thing can pull 7,250 megabytes per second reads and 6,926 megabyte per second writes. So when it comes to overall responsiveness and speed, the TimeTech SSD has a long way to go before it catches up with the performance of drives from more established brands. 
and I suspect this mostly has to do with Timetech's drive lacking a DRAM cache, meaning that it not only gets slower as you fill it up with files, but it's also just outright slower right out of the gate because the microcontroller on the drive doesn't have quick access to an address table, meaning it needs to calculate the locations of files on the fly. Now this could not be an issue anymore, and I'm going to go ahead and say that they're probably aware of this, and I think there's a chance they could have added a cache on a more recent revision, but I don't have first-hand experience with any of their more current drives. Additionally, I don't have experience with their NVMe drives either, so I can't comment on them specifically, but I do have some thoughts to share regarding their SATA SSDs. For years now, the SATA hard drive has been the standard for secondary storage, and with SATA and NVMe SSDs now available, the speed limitation of the hard disk drive is going to become more of a bottleneck to system initialization and program responsiveness. And as a result, in time, the HDD will go the way of the floppy disk, and be relegated to more niche use case scenarios. And to help bridge the gap between the HDD and the SSD, I feel as if these TimeTech SSDs could become more popular as a low price, solid state alternative to the hard drive. And even under a worst case scenario situation, with my drive being almost 100% full, the SSD was still pulling 522 megabyte per second reads and 412 megabyte per second writes, which is twice the max speed of my SATA hard drives, which top out at about 200 megabytes per second. I guess what I'm trying to say is that for a boot drive, I would not recommend picking up a TimeTech SSD, simply because compared to other smaller capacity drives from Samsung and Kingston, this thing is noticeably slower when it comes to boot and load times. However, install a game on here such as Doom Eternal, and your loading times will be drastically improved, even though it's not as fast on paper as the more beefy drives from their competitors. I can legitimately see TimeTech becoming a player in the SSD market, where they have high performance NVMe drives dedicated solely to deliver fast boot times, and then slower SATA SSDs meant to be a hard drive substitute or outright replacement. From the bottom of my heart, I really do love the products offered by TimeTech. While they don't offer the most technically advanced and beefy hardware, what they do offer is a streamlined, mainstream product with the R&D dedicated solely to performance and cost, without wasting it on features that don't affect performance, such as RGB lighting or fancy coverings. And I have to say that I can't wait to see what they do next, because I'll be watching it very closely. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. If someone from TimeTech does end up watching this video by some chance, I hope you can understand what I'm trying to get across, because the products your engineers are developing are some of the most reliable and understated pieces of hardware that I can name off the top of my head. I can legitimately make a recommendation on their products, given that you stick to the parameters I discussed in this video and I can't wait to see what they do next. I'm incredibly impressed by them, and I hope that they're finding success, and hopefully this video will help to shed some light on their products and brand as a whole. But it was fun talking, and if you want to learn more about computer hardware or software, then the annotations on screen are a great place to start. Thanks for spending your time with me, and thanks for watching.